Hi, I'm Kaden. Welcome back to my channel again. It's been a week of the social distancing until now, and yeah, everyone is stay at home. But uh, I still want to try to make some video at home, and all the tool here, which I try my best to get all the tool here to do the video for today, and especially thanks to Mr. Chung to send me this uh, Hario Bueno uh, kettle because uh, I only lacking of the kettle then I can talk about the topic for today this is the second video of the coffee 101 series and the topic today we are going to talk about the importance of pre-infusion in hand brew so before we start I want to repeat like to talk about the word what is pre-infusion so some people call pre-infusion blooming mean when you pour water and you see the coffee is bloom so they call it blooming but uh, let's go to understand the detail about the word pre-infusion so pre-infusion mean the thing you do before infusion so what we do before that we give water to infuse the coffee so this step this technique we call pre-infusion technique Today, I'm going to show you the effect when you do pre-infusion properly and not do it properly and what we get in the result, how can it affect the coffee brewing. The equipment we will use today is a Hario V60. This is a glass material V60, uh, one of my favorite coffee filters. The coffee we are going to use today is the Ethiopia Moonstorm G1 The same coffee like the last video Yeah, somehow I only can find this coffee at home So let's use this coffee to do this testing and we will see the result The brew recipe today, we are going to use a 15 gram of coffee 225 gram of water So the brew recipe is 1 to 15 And I'm planning to put 35 gram of water to do the pre-infusion and then separate the remaining water into half and half 90 and 90 yeah. so we already have the same coffee in this uh, coffee canister so I just take this same coffee out from here yep. so today we have to use the hand grinder and 15 gram of coffee bean so let's talk about pre-infusion so pre-infusion is a technique how you give water to the coffee before uh, the coffee is infused and today i'm going to show you the first brew with proper pre-infusion technique and then the second brew i'm going to show you like uh, i simply do a pre-infusion Let's compare the result and see how important if you do the pre-infusion correctly or do it wrong. Okay, 15, 15.4. Ah, that's fine. Yeah, let's grind the coffee. First, let's preheat the vessel first. Yep, and the water temperature here is roughly about 94, 95. So first thing, put the paper. All this V60 paper you need to fold here before you put it. And put the paper here and give some water to make it wet also to warm up your brewing equipment okay, okay let's put the coffee here Flattened. Mm. 
and we start to do brain infusion. So some people they will start the timer and do and give water, but for me, I will start the timer after I give water, because when I think when the coffee is fully wet, then we start to count the infusion time. So let's give 35 gram of water. So in a proper pre infusion, I will plan for this 35 gram. I will give about 20 gram almost in the middle part, and then the rest I will turn around. The reason I give more water in the middle part is because the structure of the V60. So if you did not give enough volume of water in the middle, it might look wet on the surface, but in the bottom it's dry. So when you start to brew, it starts to get channeling. So we have to focus on the middle, at least give half of your target into the middle and then you go around. Yeah, so the infusion is done. So while we start to brew, we give 90. Okay, so let the water uh, dropping half and then we continue to put water again. So the second brew, I will do a little bit aggressive for the turbulence. Every time when you start, try to start on the middle to give enough water on the middle because the structure of the V60. Five. Yeah, that's easy. A few moments later. Okay, total contact time here is two minutes and ten seconds. Yeah, it's done now. Let's try this coffee. Yeah, the aroma is really fruity. Yeah, you can smell some uh, stone fruit, uh, some citrus. Yeah, and caramel because this coffee is rose medium for both uh, pour and also espresso. So you can smell caramel in the aroma. It's really nice and sweet peach, orange, following by the aftertaste, a bit like pomelo. Yeah, very clean and very high clarity flavor. Mm, this is a very nice coffee. Okay, let's prepare to make the second brew, which I will do the, simply do the pre-infusion. Yeah, and let's find out the result. Okay, let's make the second brew. Okay, let's start the same. Preheat the vessel and wet the paper. Put the coffee in. Flat the bed. And I'm going to simply pre infusion with 35 grams of water. I mean, I pour from the middle and move to the side and circle until 35 grams of water. So let's start. Okay, 
it. Yeah, still have some CO2 escape. Yeah, so we can start to pour now. I will pour exactly the same recipe. But the, just the pre-infusion different just now. You can see this bubble. This is the result like you did not do pre-infusion properly. So there is some dry pocket still inside the coffee. And wait until half. And my second pro will be more aggressive. second faster let's taste this coffee and see what's the different mm. from the aroma I can smell a little bit more nutty than the first one we brew. The body is uh, similar, but the aftertaste, yeah, the aftertaste have a little bit like a um, nutty. And this is in the result, like certain part of the coffee is over extract. Uneven extraction is happened in this brew. In the result, this coffee gives me a very high clarity sweet and balanced coffee while this coffee is slightly lacking of sweetness and have the flavor mix of uneven extraction a little bit like more extract a little bit less extract the acidity obviously a little bit higher than this because here channeling happened channeling mean the water find the easy way to go through and maybe there's some part coffee is uh, still a bit dry and less extraction so coffee just go through the way it's already wet and open up the channel and cause the result like this. So I can get uh, again, let's compare one more time. Here I get a sharp acidity and a little bit nutty in the aftertaste, which you don't find in the packaging because of uh, over extract. So this coffee is show a little bit nutty flavor. Okay, let's compare this again. Yeah, very clean and clear in the flavor. Uh, you can pronounce the flavor exactly like uh, the note written in the packaging. And I don't find any nutty aftertaste in this brew. If you do pre-infusion good, then you are more easy to get a good result. So it's the same with espresso or pour over, yeah, they are the same. The theory of, uh, the principle and theory of extraction is never changed. If you still have any more question uh, related to pre-infusion topic today, blooming pre-infusion topic today, yeah, please hashtag hi Kaden and following by your question below the comment of this video and I will answer your question. So please don't forget to like, uh, like my video and subscribe my channel. Thank you for watching and I will see you again next time.